Okay, so if you want to start making chain mail, I just want to show you the various types of pliers that you can go for. Um, this would be a flat nose plier. Okay, you can see that this is a flat surface on here. This is a chain nose plier. Okay, this is what these will look like. And this is a bent nose plier. And you can see it's got a bend, makes sense. And this is a chisel nose plier. Okay, so basically a chisel nose plier is very much like a chain nose plier. It's just that it comes to a tip um, at an angle as opposed to being straight on. But this has a very nice small tip uh, for you to work with. So just keep that in mind. Now I brought some of these cheapy pliers out. These are the little $5 pliers or $2 pliers you can get at your um, craft stores or at your hardware stores, okay? And these will be fine for about five minutes, um, but they're much harder to squeeze, okay? You can see this doesn't have any kind of ergonomic grip either. So squeezing it, I know it seems easy at first, but that's gonna become a chore. Um, sometimes you can get these little ridges in here. These are gonna tear up your, plier, your uh, jump rings real fast, okay? So you never wanna use this type, this is more for, um, you know, kind of wire working or gripping on something. These are not appropriate for chain mail at all. Um, and then I'm going to show you another, uh, another brand of pliers. Now I just want to show you that these cheap kind that you get, and, and actually sometimes some of the very expensive. Can you see how shiny this is, this surface? Okay. Shiny means it's going to slip off jump rings really easily. And what happens when you slip off your jump rings is that you are going to scratch your jump rings. So if you're gonna use real cheap pliers like this, you probably are gonna to need to dip it into tool dip or something like that to give you um, more friction to the surface, okay? So these are the cheap, cheap, cheap. But let me show you a brand that's um, still fairly inexpensive, but um, very high quality. So these are Zurons that you'll see with the blue handle. That's what the chisel nose were. And if you'll notice, this isn't a super shiny metal, okay? Their metal um, has the slightest bit of friction to it, which makes them uh, very, uh, you know, they remain their size because you don't have to put tool dip on it. They're easy to use and they're just almost effortless to squeeze, okay? And uh, you'll find that with, you know, pretty much all of the more expensive pliers as they have um, a little bit better handles. Now, Zeron doesn't go crazy with making uh, fancy handles, but you can always tape these up to uh, give them more cushion or um, there's little, uh, you know, slide-ons that you can put on the handle to give them a little bit different grip. But um, what I really like about these is their tips are really nice and the metal that they make them out of is, is really high quality easy to squeeze and they don't slip off your rings okay so this was the chisel nose that i showed you this is a bent nose plier and they also come in all sorts of uh, flat nose pliers and if you're into uh, wire working and wire wrapping and things like that um, these two pairs are invaluable for wire wrapping this is a um, tweezer nose plier and this is a bent nose that's tweezer size. And um, this is also invaluable in chain mail. If I had to, what I would do was have two pairs of pliers, okay? Probably a bent nose and a flat nose maybe. And then if I was gonna um, splurge for a third pair of pliers later, I would splurge for this one. Simply for the fact that it's got a really tiny tip. And sometimes as you get better at chain mail, you might be trying to grab rings um, in real tiny formations and it's very hard to get in there and grab the rings so you can get it closed. So uh, this one kind of does the job but I really like uh, the Zoran pliers. They run about $20 a pair so they really won't break the bank. Um, a lot of the other fancier pliers run about uh, $40 to $90 a pair depending on what you get. Um, so, you know, I like these for starting out with. I think they're great. Like I said, you only need uh, two pairs and they come in all sorts of, you know, short and wide, um, short and very uh, skinny. And um, this one's longer. 
and this would be appropriate for a little bit larger jump rings like uh, like we're going to use when we're when I show you to open and close this is um, a little bit larger jump ring uh, you want the smaller like the chisel nose or this small flat nose um, if you tend to work with micro mail okay so all sorts of different types of tools um, this is definitely going to help you if you're just getting started if you have two pairs of good pliers to work with if you can only afford one pair here's what i would recommend i would recommend buying a really good pair of flat or chisel nose pliers okay for your dominant hand and then use the cheapy pliers maybe a bent nose maybe a cheapy bent nose for your non-dominant hand to come in and close the rings with this will work for you for a while until you can afford to get that second pair of non-slip pliers that are going to um, be easy to squeeze. You, you're not going to need to use your non-dominant hand quite as much, so um, it'd probably be okay to go with a cheap plier there if you need to when you first get started. So now that I've shown you all the different types of pliers, um, let me show you a couple more tools. Uh, this is a jump ring opening tool. That's opening only, not closing. This doesn't give you the control you need to close a jump ring properly. And the other thing I tend to substitute in is a fork. And this is for um, my heavier gauge jump rings. Um, this is a 16 gauge SWG, which would be about a 1.6 millimeter thick wire. And uh, those are a little heavy and they can be hard on your hands if you like to use a jump ring opening tool. Um, it can rub on your finger over time and, uh, you know, kind of rub in here. So uh, I keep a fork around too, just in case I want something to be a little bit easier on my hands. But let me show you the three different ways to open a jump ring. Now I'm gonna do this just for a right-handed person. I just wanna mention that before I start. So basically what we wanna do, I've drawn a jump ring here. The opening is at 12 o'clock. Here is three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock, okay? So basically what we wanna do is we wanna uh, grab the jump ring at around three o'clock and nine o'clock with our two pairs of pliers. Or this could be pliers and this could be some kind of opening tool, okay? So this could either be um, a pair of pliers it could be the jump ring opener, or it could be some other type of tool uh, that has a slot in it that you're gonna put the jump ring into to open it. Okay, so we wanna grab here with our dominant hand, and with our non-dominant hand, um, we're gonna bring that in once we've grabbed the jump ring to go ahead and open with that. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you with two pairs of pliers, okay? So I just have a pair of flat nose pliers. I'm gonna use my medium uh, gauged wire. This is about a 1.2 millimeter wire, 18 gauge SWG. I'm gonna grab around three o'clock. And in this case, I kept out a pair of uh, bent nose pliers just to show you how easy this is when you're opening jump rings to just use this little curve. You can see I'm aiming for nine o'clock, but I'm really able to grab it from uh, like seven o'clock all the way up to 11 o'clock. My opening's here, that would be 12 o'clock where the opening is, okay? And then, before I do that, I'll just show you what I'm gonna do. I am going to, on the right-hand side, I'm gonna pull back, and on the left-hand side, I'm going to push away from me, okay? So let's do that real quick, okay? Three o'clock. Nine o'clock, pull with the right, push with the left. Okay, and now you've opened a jump ring. So that would be with two pairs of pliers. Now, if I wanna use a jump ring opening tool, this has four slots on it. That's for a um, one millimeter wire to fit into, a 1.2 millimeter wire to fit into, a 1.6 millimeter wire, and a 0.8 millimeter wire. Okay, so basically what I want to do is put this on my finger. Now this is not going to fit everybody, so you may elect not to use these ever at all. 
um, because it, you just don't have the right size finger. I'm pretty medium sized, um, but people with extra small or extra large fingers are going to have a hard time with this. So basically I'm gonna put my thumb underneath and I just wanna show you that the grooves that I'm gonna use are open towards the inside of my body, okay? They're facing inwards, not up or down. Although I will show you that some people, you know, like to kind of hold it like this, and you know, then it's gonna be possibly in a little bit different position. But you can do that once you get comfortable with this. But for right now, let's have it facing towards the inside of the body, okay? What this tool does is, is leaves my left hand free of a tool so that I can easily pick up jump rings and get them open very quickly. So in this case, I'm gonna grab at three o'clock. I'm gonna slide this in at nine o'clock. Okay, you can see the opening there. And I'm gonna pull with my right and push with my left. And you notice I was supporting it underneath with my, with my thumb. And I'll just show you here what this does is makes you ultra fast at opening jump rings because your left hand is pretty much free to pick up or manipulate anything that you need to so you can um, have a pile of jump rings open in a very short period of time. Okay, so that's the whole point of this tool. Okay, now the third tool, like I said, um, if you get doing a whole lot of work, this can really rub on your finger and um, cause you a little bit of pain. And um, sometimes we're going to have a little bit heavier gauge wire than that can handle. So that's when I tend to bring in a fork as my speed tool. Now this does not leave my hand completely free like it did when I just had something on my finger. But this is not quite as bulky as a pair of pliers to pick up and put down each time. So you can see I grabbed around 3 o'clock. I slide in the slot at 9 o'clock. And there you go. And you can see this is a little bit more cumbersome than a jump ring opening tool that fits on my finger. But even still, I can fairly easily hold a couple things um, in my hand at a time. And this, uh, you know, definitely helps take, take the pressure off, off my hand. Okay, so those are the three different ways you can either use um, pliers in your non-dominant hand, you can use a jump ring opening tool, or you can use um, some other type of tool like a fork that has a uh, slot in it to fit the jump ring. Okay, so when we're ready to close our jump rings, I just wanna point out here that I've done another diagram for you. Okay, so our opening is at 12 o'clock, and when we grab our jump rings, we're gonna grab them at three o'clock and at nine o'clock or somewhere thereabouts, okay? And I just want you to notice that in this photo that the arrows aren't going straight this way and straight this way. It's going, this, this part is back towards me and I'm gonna be pushing this forward and up to the left and the left hand side, I'm going to be pulling back towards myself but I'm also gonna pull it a little bit to the right. Okay, so I'm actually pushing these inward at the same time that I'm closing. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I grab this around three o'clock and around nine o'clock and I'm pushing and pulling, but I'm also uh, pushing inward at the same time that I'm doing that. What I want to do is make sure that these just ever so slightly overlap each other, okay? So that that's fully pushed in almost more than it needs to be. And then as I pull it back, that's going to match up almost perfectly without leaving a seam. So the other thing I can do is I can feel this to see and make sure that this is smooth. If it's not smooth, then I want to, uh, you know, tweak it just a little bit more, okay? I'll show you that one more time. Grab at three o'clock, grab at nine o'clock, push with my right, pull with my left, 
while also pushing in towards each other. That's gonna overlap maybe slightly, maybe. And then when I pull back, go just a little bit more, but you'll notice I'm not doing a wiggling motion when I'm doing that, okay? So we have another good closure there. So let me real quickly um, discuss with you something about materials. And I think I'll use a real tiny jump ring to illustrate this. Okay, we, we're using anodized aluminum jump rings here. Okay, you don't wanna wiggle your jump rings back and forth when you're closing them a lot. You don't wanna do a lot of this. You wanna overshoot, bring it back, and then just tweak it ever so slightly. However, a lot of chainmail teachers will teach you to do this wiggle motion. And the reason they do that is when you're using copper wire or sterling silver wire, which are very soft, then when you're doing this, okay, they'll do a little, a little bit of this, okay? And the reason they do that is to work harden the material as you're closing it, okay? But the reason you don't wanna do that with aluminum is all you're doing with aluminum is weakening it and making it break more easily, okay? So you can do a little wiggle if you're working with soft coppers or soft sterling silver, um, and you don't want to do it otherwise with some of the harder metals and particularly aluminum. The more you open and close the jump rings, the more likely it is that it's going to break. Okay. So we have, um, some nice closures here and, uh, hopefully this will be a successful uh, recipe for, um, getting perfect closures every time.